y'all, it's Courtney, and I am back with another video, and apparently, apparently, I am just oblivious to my, hopefully you guys can see me okay, because my, it's always something, I swear, my front facing, or my, um, the camera on the inside, where the screen is at, whenever I film on that, I don't know how this would happen but this the volume isn't working on that so whenever I film using the front facing camera there's no sound so I have to use the camera that's on the back of the phone but then I can't see if I'm in frame and everything so hopefully it looks okay I don't know this is a mystery to me uh hopefully everything turns out okay but it's always something I'm not um so Apparently, the beauty community is on fire, and I have been oblivious about it. Um, I knew that Rich Lux and Luscious Massacre were in a little feud, um, but I had no idea. And I, I remember, um, I remember Ashley Kyle appreciating that Here for the Tea stuck up for, you know, people not bringing people's kids into things, which I completely agree with. Um, I don't really like Here for the Tea. I love Ashley Kyle. I've been, um, subscribed to Ashley Kyle since she had, like, two or three hundred subscribers. Um, love her to death. Uh, I don't like Here for the Tea, but I can respect why Ashley Kyle appreciates what she did. But, at the same time, I can't really fucks with it because you can't think it's okay to say something about one person's child, but then turn around and defend somebody for somebody else saying something about their child. Um, because Here for the Tea has made some pretty not nice comments about Petty Page's child, but then turn around and defended Ashley Kyle for things being said about her children. So, it's kind of a hard thing to... It's, it's kind of hard to not be on the fence with that situation because I am an empath and I can see just about anything from just about anybody's point of view. Um, I'm really bad about that. I'm really bad about being able to understand where people are coming from almost all of the time. Um, I can almost always understand where somebody's coming from or why they would, even if I don't agree how they could feel the way that they do or why they would feel the way that they do. Um, so it's very hard for me sometimes to pick a side, um, because I can see everybody's point of view. Um, so I'm not here to pick a side. Uh, that's not what I'm going to do because I like everybody from every side. Uh, I usually, for anybody that found this video and hasn't seen my face before, um, I usually talk about uh, a part of the drama community that is a very niche section of the drama community. Um, I call it the trailer park of YouTube. <laughs> um, some people call it the boy, which is bottom of YouTube. Um, but really my niche of the dra of the tree of drama, um, was actually not part of Voight to begin with. It was its own little thing. And then boy came and they kind of got together and then now the true crime um drama community has kind of came and, and it's just kind of like taking all these small communities and we're kind of like mashing them all together to start being a bigger community so um that's my normal community but i got into that community because i was into the beauty drama community for a long time um so for you guys that usually watch me and don't know who I'm talking about right now, I'm talking about the beauty drama community, or beauty part of the drama community. For you guys that have never seen me before, it's because I usually talk about a niche section of the drama community known as, known to me, lovingly of course, as the trailer park of YouTube. Um, as I said, I'm not here to, to pick sides, but I am here to kind of say what I agree and disagree about. Um, I had no idea about the um, Nick Snyder and uh, T by Alley thing. I get on um, Twitter, but I don't 
like I never just scroll through my timeline and see what people are saying so unless somebody else comments on um, Dustin Daly or T by Alley or any of those people unless somebody that I know comments on those things um, I'm probably not gonna see it um, so I had no idea what was going on I'm oblivious I'm the type of person that there could be a tornado right behind me and I wouldn't know it because I'm like mm -hmm, off in my own little world and I complained to my daughter about the, being the same way she's I complain to her, but I'm that way too. <laughs> um, if it doesn't directly involve me, I usually am not paying attention. And my husband gets mad about that too because um, he says that I'm not aware of my surroundings, which I think I've gotten a lot better about it. But obviously, this has been going on for a month and I had no idea about it. So obviously, I still got a little bit of work to do. Um, so apparently, uh, Nick Snyder had a big, huge housewarming party and T by Alley acted a fool, basically, essentially. That's, um, Nick drank some alcohol, and Nick and Alley are both, and this is why I am actually talking about this, because I talk about addiction, recovery, mental illness, those are the type of things, I talk about drama too, but a lot of the things that I talk about in some way relate to addiction or mental health or recovery or something like that. Um, and T by Alley and Nick Snyder are both recovering addicts, just like me. Um, so I can understand where Nick is, really I understand where Nick is coming from with this. Um, he had a few drinks at his party. Um, apparently he had pulled out a bottle and Allie went and grabbed it from him and took it from him, which he said that he does appreciate it now. But at the time, you know, he said she was kind of like overreacting a little bit. Um, I can understand both sides of that. You know, she, I think she probably thought she was being a concerned friend because she's also in recovery. And I think that she was the only other person there that was in recovery. So she felt like it was her job to make sure that he didn't go overboard, maybe. Um, and I've been in that position but I've also been in the position of somebody tr treating me like a child and like I can't even have a beer because I did heroin seven years ago like um doesn't really equate so apparently she went around in DMs after this and she knew what she was doing she knew what she was saying was very misleading she went around and told some people that Nick had relapsed, okay? Now, if I would tell you that I relapsed, um, your first thought, well, the people that know me, the people that don't, um, I have been in recovery from heroin and Xanax, for which I, I would use anything I could get it my hands on, but my drugs of choice were heroin and Xanax. Um, so if I told my friends on here that I relapsed, their first thought is going to go to heroin or Xanax. They're not going to think, oh, well, she smoked some pot, or oh, um, she took a muscle relaxer, or you know what I mean? They're going to think the worst, because when you say relapse, that's what comes to your mind is your drug of choice. You going and doing your drug of choice and really fucking up. Um, but no, all it was was that he drank, and in my opinion, this is like a really hard topic for people in recovery because it's so like people are either way on this side or way on this side but once again I understand both sides um some people think that once the only way to be sober is to be abstinent and do nothing and be addicted to nothing which is impossible in my opinion because somebody that has ever been an addict will always replace one addiction with another. Even if it's just a knitting addiction. I used to be addicted to heroin. Now I'm addicted to knitting things all the time. People who are prone to addiction will always, when they get into something, they get really into it. Um, they get addicted to it. Um, but anyways, uh, they're either on one side or the other. And it's either... When you get clean, 
to in order to actually be clean you have to be abstinent and do nothing but then you have people on this side that say well you know i i quit doing the dope i quit uh taking pills i quit doing coke i quit doing this i quit doing that having a beer every now and then isn't going to hurt me i wasn't a never addicted to alcohol i was never an alcoholic so why would having a beer hurt me when i was addicted to heroin or addicted to cocaine which and i can understand that side as well because about once a year, I go and have a couple of drinks, you know what I mean? And I'm in recovery and never once. And I do understand too, that the people on this side say that, well, you're more likely to relapse on your drug of choice when you're drunk, because obviously your inhibitions are lowered when you're drinking. And I get that too. But like I said, I've been clean for over seven years now and I've never once went and got my drug of choice because I was drunk. Um, so I can understand both sides of that equation. So, I can't be too judgmental. Um, but I can say that going and saying that somebody relapsed when they had a drink, she knew that that was very misleading. She knew that was very manipulative. And she knew that that wasn't what she should have said or how she should have described the situation. Um, that was malicious, I believe. I believe that that was malicious. Of course it was. I mean, if you go and say that somebody relapsed and it, they only took, had a drink of alcohol, I mean, I don't see that being um, in, a concerned friend in any way. I'm sorry. I just don't. Um, and if you are a real concerned friend, you would go to that person and say, I'm afraid you're going to relapse because you're drinking alcohol. You wouldn't go in the DMs of a bunch of other people and say, this person relapsed, but not say it was on alcohol just say this person relapsed. So I really don't agree with that. Um, and then the second part,